Welcome to WTHA's award-winning sports feed. Tonight's show is brought to you by Five Star Mitsubishi. Here are your hosts, Jordan Tracy and Andrew Lee Penwell. What's up, ghosts and ghouls? Hi, everyone. It's 1110. Put the kids to bed. Eat their candy without them Say knowing. Say for us, though. It's Sports Beat Week 10, Halloween edition. I'm Jordan Tracy. And I'm a unicorn. <laughs> You're on a unicorn. Happy Halloween, everyone. Should we start talking about football? <laughs> Let's get into the football. This week, we begin with a matchup between Bedford and Bishop Guilfoyle. Oh, baby, let's get into it. The Marauders playing without quarterback Carson Kesey, who had our BG up 7 nothing early, but this tip passed. And it's number 72, Parker Seigler, with the interception. And that's going to set up this run by Kevin Ressler, who puts the Bisons within 1-7-6 BG leads. Second quarter, Ethan Weber moving like a freight train. Choo-choo! Oh, I like trains. Getting the first down and the Bison moving. He'd cap this drive off, getting the screen, and getting into the end zone to take the 12-7 lead. Bedford goes on to win this one, 18-7. Holidaysburg on the road at Dubois. The Golden Tigers looking to snap a three-game losing streak. Game tied at seven in the first quarter. Beavers getting things going. Trey Wingard finds Cameron Hayes. Hayes, 43 yards for the touchdown. Point after no good, so Dubois up 13-7. Second quarter, Holidaysburg taking the lead. Tucker Rosman rolling right and finds Caden Delatre for the score. Tigers up 14-13, and Holidaysburg wins the close one, 36-35. Up next, a Laurel Highlands matchup in Martinsburg. 7-2 Central hosting 1-8 Somerset. After a 1-2 start, the Dragons have won six straight and cruised again tonight. Already up a score, Cade Rule puts Central up 14 to nothing. Ensuing drive, Jeff enter the Dragon Flowenstein. Because the hair this wow. year. You're welcome. He's got better receivers than the Packers. Okay. It's Eli Lingenfelter yeah. on the wow. fade. You're not Flowenstein wrong. threw six scores tonight and is two from the state record. Dragons win 47 to 17. Puns Valley making the trip to <laughs> Bellwood Antis this evening. Rams got off to the races early, up 14 0 in the first quarter. Miles Brooks takes the handoff. Hands off to the races. Penns Valley up 21 0 in this one. Blue Devils looking to get something, anything going. Like the Rams defense coming up big. Micah Good. More like Micah Very Good. Oh, yeah. Gavin Ridgeway and taking it to the house for the pick six. Penns Valley leads 28 0 and they win big 42 0. All right, Cambria Heights at Northern Bedford. This was a great matchup on paper, a little less in person. Second quarter, Adam <laughs> Johnson. Anderley, take it away. Run, 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 he goes. He'll do that for 87 Yarda Rooney's 30 0 Panthers on top before the half. Highlanders hitting the two minute drill like champs. Isaac Weiland connects with Luke Ball Rainey for. <laughs> First, sorry, without the music, you can just hear the heavy air from my costume. But the drive stalls out. NBC rolls 37 to 14. They go 10 and oh. Jordan, we're clearly having a lot of fun. So much fun. Our job is ridiculous. Coming up next, we're taking a trip to Huntington County. It's a thriller between Mount Union and Judiata Valley in an ICC clash for the ages. Don't go anywhere. Our game of the week is next. Week sponsored by Five Star Mitsubishi in Altoona. Tonight it's Mountain Union and Juniata Valley facing off in Huntington County. The fact you had to turn your entire body to look at me. Sorry. The Trojans enter this one six and three on the year, and the Hornets five and four. This one was a thriller, so buckle up. I hear we go. Now this thriller was started by Mountain Union running the opening kickoff back for a touchdown. Now four minutes into play. Uh, first in the Hornets turn to their thousand yard rusher, Andrew McMonagall. He goes 41 yards to the house for the score, but the Trojans lead 13 to seven at the end of one. Midway through the second, the Hornets respond. Theme of the first half was explosive plays and Jacob Rodkey goes 80 yards untouched to the house. We'll speed this up for you as the game is tied at 13. Final minute of the half of the Trojans driving. Bryce Danish scrambles and tosses this one up to Braylon Nabel. He comes down with it for 26 yards. Danish finishes off the drive with this short TD run, 19-13, Mount Union at the half. Hornets now down 22-13 with nine minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. And Nick Ronigal provides the spark, mixing it up, going 44 yards. This one 
JV punches it in on the next play to make it 22 to 20. JV still down by two, two minutes left, facing third and long. Reed Edwards take a shot downfield. Rodkey for 35 yards and the Hornets are buzzing in business. Then with 55 seconds remaining, McMonagle takes the toss, scores the game-winning touchdown as the Hornets take their first lead of the game. And that would stay that way. They win it 26-22. Let's send it down to Risky Biz to see how riled up he's got the Hornets. What a great conclusion to this game. Juniata Valley did not lead until 55 seconds left in the game, but you guys pulled it off. <laughs> All right, Andrew McMonagle, McMonagle yes, you just ran all over the place. You like, could not be stopped. What were you seeing on the field? I uh, just had my blockers in my way, and I was following them where to go. That's about it. How are you guys able to stay composed and come back and win this game? We're just out here playing football. We knew we wanted it. We want to come out here and do the deal. All right, and then you had a great catch on the game-winning drive. Can you kind of take me through that play on that third and long? It was an epic throw from our quarterback, Reed Edwards. It, it was outside, outside shoulder, DB couldn't get to it, and it was an awesome throw. He put it right where only I could catch it. And there were a lot of explosive plays in this one. You had a long touchdown run in that first half. What was kind of the key to just getting everyone so involved right now? Getting everybody fired up, everybody into the, into the game, and doing their job, specifically their job. Um, on that long run, we had all, everybody did their job blocking, and I, I, I wasn't even touched. So, <laughs> all right, well, guys, next week is the postseason. How, how excited is everyone? Yeah! One thing to say. One all right. Thing to say. Tonight we have done the deal. Yeah! Yeah! Time now for our hit of the week, sponsored by Belding and Mall. It goes to Christian Ruiz against the big hit on the receiver. Check out this play. Connect deep, and he hauls it in, but the big hit lays him down. That's our hit of the week. Time now for our band of the week, sponsored by Sisney and O'Donnell, and this one is Con Ma Township. <laughs> Pennsylvanians are in pain to keep us safe. I'm Sam Penna from Richland High School. You're watching Sports Beat on WTAJ. Go Rams. Welcome back, everyone. Last week of the season means a full slate of Heritage and Westpac crossover games leading into tomorrow's Appalachian Bowl between Penn's Manor and Berlin. Tonight we have Winburn and Portage facing off in a matchup of the second place teams. Anderley, take it away. Well, let's jump right into the second quarter of this one. Ramblers up 7-0. John Schuster takes the direct snap to the outside, finds an opening for the 35-yard touchdown and leads 14-0. The ensuing kickoff, Trent Bella breaks free for the Mustangs. Jordan <laughs> takes it inside the 10-yard line on this one after he gets a little bit run, run, run. Later in the drive, the Winberg defense forces a fourth down. Portage goes for it, and Jake Holstetter breaks up the desperation pass as the Ramblers win 31-0. Glendale hosting Kerwinsville. Zeke Dubler off the handoff for the Vikings. He bounces it to the outside and goes down the sideline. He'll take it all the way for the score. Vikings up 7-0. Later in the quarter, Golden Tide driving, but... As they roll out, throw it up, it is picked off. Lucas Tarnow and the Vikings take over. Long drive would lead to this in the second quarter. Dubler pushes his way through in for the score. Glendale wins it 49-23. to Now let's take a trip across the state, shall we? Altoona on the road at Cumberland Valley this evening. Altoona just 2-4 and four on the year, looking for a conference win over the 3-3 three and three Eagles. Now this one, ref Tom Dunleavy Jr. was honored at the game for reffing for over 30 years, so congratulations Woo! to him. Thank you. Eagles ball now. Isaac Sines roll into his left and floats it up. Finds Caden Pines for the score. 17-yard touchdown. Sines to Pines. That connection gives the Eagles the 20 nothing lead. Pines, Pines. But Altoona wouldn't quit trying to answer. This give is to Alex Yost. Finds a seam, stiff arms the defender, and Scampers in for six. And that would be the only score for Altoona's Cumberland Valley wins 37 to six. State College in Chambersburg, first quarter, Little Lions getting it going early. Dante Nastasi in for the quick score. More from State College after a big run 
Rayshon Parker caps it off with a short touchdown run for the visitors. State College stays undefeated, winning 36-7. Time for our revved up performance of the week, sponsored by Roundhouse Harley Davidson. With 55 seconds left, it's Andrew McGonagall on the toss and puts the Hornets up for the win. That is our revved up performance of the week. Go we'll right. Madison is a proud sponsor of WTAJ News. Welcome back to Sports Beat. Chestnut Ridge and Penn Cambria facing off this evening in the El Hack. The 8 1 Panthers coming off a win at Forest Hills, and the 6 and 3 Lions coming off a loss against Richland. Chestnut Ridge is away at Penn Cambria. Penn Cambria starting off strong with this brother duo. Garrett Harold passes it to Gavin Harold, runs it down the sideline, dodging tackles, and then you know what? I'll take it to the other sideline, please. And he'll he end up going all the way to the other side. You can still see him there. He's run, run, And in for the score, putting him 13 to nothing. It's just that Ridge has the ball, go for a run play, but Penn Cambria knocks it loose, and Thomas Plunkett recovers the ball for the Panthers. Penn Cambria wins this one, 42-17. to Brookville and Belfont, second quarter. Brookville up 7-3, and good defense here from the Raiders. Peterson diving to pick off Liam Hartlerman. Later in the quarter, Peterson followed up that pick with a touchdown pass. Woo! Here he airs one out for Braden Kunselman. Brookville leads 14-3, and they roll to a massive 41-3 win. Next up, a matchup of a pair of six and three teams. Northern Cambria travels to Economa Township this evening. Second play of the game for CT. Tanner Shirley connects with Ethan Black, and he goes 74 yards to the house, and CT would go up seven to nothing. Now the Colts, but answer quickly though. Colton Paranish on the handoff, and he breaks free. Get that reference? I hope you do. 31 yard house call, scores seven to six. Next drive for Northern Cambria, Owen Balfour hits Peyton Myers, who hauls it in and takes the hit. And that's going to set up an eight-yard score for Jack Charity. And the Colts win this one in general. <laughs> Mountaineer student section showing up for some holiday spirit in this one. First drive of the game for the Mountaineers is capped off with this shifty touchdown run from Sam McDonald as he rolls into the end zone here. The ensuing kickoff, though, is fumbled by, oh, you gotta celebrate here. Of gotta course. celebrate first. It's doing kickoff. There's the kickoff. Yep, there we are. Fumbled by Ridgeway here and jumped on all over by the Mountaineers to give them some good field position in this one. This time, Ben Gutsky would punch it in with the quarterback keeper from two to go up here. Now, still in the first quarter of this one, Jacody Jones fumbles into the end zone to give the team, and Phillipsburg would. Win this one at 56 to 34 over Ridgeway. All right, coming up next, it's our play and player of the week. Justin Barron's is running for office. Time now for our player of the week, sponsored by the Star Trailer Sales. This one is Penn Cambria starting off strong, and it's the brother duo, of course. Garrett Harold finding or this ball to Gavin Harold. Run sideline, dodge and tackles, run, 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 sideline to sideline, all over he goes. It's Penn Cambria's touchdown here puts them up 13 to nothing. Time now for our Player of the Week, sponsored by Walker and Walker Equipment. And it's going to Jeff Hohenstein from Central. He had six touchdowns tonight, wow. leaving him too shy of the PIAA record for career passing touchdowns. And when you get that close to a record and playoffs looming, that's how you get the Player of the Week. It's going to be a close one. It's going to be a close one. A lot of big action to, uh, tonight. And also a lot of big action because playoffs start next week. Can you believe it? Regular season is And over. Halloween's this weekend, which is the best. Send me some candy, please, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye. See you next week. Bye.